get some sleep. The phrase was like a light switch for Og. Despite the dim morning light illuminating the gray skies of Polis, Og suddenly felt exhausted, and he struggled to keep his eyes open. With the arrival of reinforcements, the wounded and those who had been fighting all night were able to rotate off the front lines and catch some much-needed shut-eye. Og went back inside the hospital, and he was lucky he was in the Titan District, where things were built to accommodate someone of his size. He found a hospital bed inside that was unused, and even though doctors and nurses and other staff were bustling all around him, treating the wounded and cleaning up the mess from the battle, Og fell into a deep sleep, and he began to dream. Og found himself standing in the middle of the sky path, where he and the other Ogren crawled inch by inch towards the hospital. But the sky was black, and there didn't seem to be any light coming from anywhere. But Og could see everything as if it was the brightest noon on a cloudless day. Before him lay the body of Pete, the Ogren who had died from his wounds during the crawl. Og knelt over the body of his friend. So innocent. I am sorry for the death of your friend. I truly am. But that is the cost of revolution. Og stood and turned to the voice. There was a figure sitting in the middle of the skyway on a large throne made of riveted scrap metal. He wore a dingy crown and wore a dark cloak with gray fur lining. He carried a scepter topped with a broken cog. The figure had no face. No matter how he looked, Og simply could not focus on the man's face. I feel rather absurd appearing this way. But this was what your mind conjured up when you imagined what I looked like. You're the Tin King! You killed Pete! You're the bad man! Og roared as he charged at the figure. But the distance between the Ogren and his adversary seemed to stretch out, and Og felt like he was moving through waist-deep mud. Every bit of his will was bent towards crushing the Tin King, but no matter how hard he tried, his enemy was just out of his reach. The Tin King simply shook his head. I am I not, not the bad, bad man, man, Og. I am I fighting fight against very bad, bad men. men. No! You're fighting against the Emperor! Where is the Emperor, Og? Is he here on Polis? Um, no. Uh, the Emperor lives uh, on Holy Terror. <laughs> lives is a very strong word. But yes, he's on Terror. He's not here. Other men are here. And they do bad things. No, this is the Emperor's planet. These men all work for the Emperor, and the Emperor is good. The Lords of Polis lie. They do not work for the Emperor. They work only for themselves. They enrich themselves off the backs of poor souls who believe their lies. Look! 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 The scene in the sky path faded away, and suddenly the light changed. Everything was illuminated by a red-hot glow. Og was standing in a cavernous section of Underhive. He could see vast forges where molten metal was being poured into molds and turned into tools and equipment. The massive factorum went on, for as far as the eye could see, 
and there were lines of people and workers and servitors shuffling along the catwalks. To Og, they looked like ants. The place was angry and hot. The air was so close in, and Og felt like he was having trouble breathing. Occasional wails of pain echoed through the enormous factorum. Everything, Everything on the surface, on the surface of, Polis of Polis survives because, because of thousands, thousands of places thousands like, this, like this, deep, like deep beneath, beneath the surface. The surface. We, we keep the power, keep the power stations, stations running. running. We, we produce, produce, all, the produce all the goods. We, we process, process the Grok's waste. waste. We, we recycle, recycle everything. everything. The liars. The, liar, liar. the men the who men say they love they the love Emperor. Love they put, put us down, down there, there, never to never see the light, the light of day, and, and they work they us. us. Everything, Everything down, down here is rotting, rotting and falling, falling apart, apart, yet they yet work they us. So many systems so many fail, systems and, fail and, and we must we go must fix them, them, no matter how dangerous, how no matter how much how radiation, much radiation no matter how much how scalding, much scalding hot, hot steam has filled the room. Og was silent, trying to understand everything the bad man was saying. The Tin King gestured to everything Og could see. I'll keep it simple for you, Og. Is this good? Is this what the Emperor wants? No. This, this is bad. This place is bad. Someone should make it better. Exactly. I am going to make it better. I am going to fix things. I am going to make things better for workers on this planet. But you killed people! Oh, there is so much death in this galaxy. And I am willing to sacrifice a few lives now so that billions have a chance at a life worth living in the future. But you attack the god. We are the Emperor's hammer. And you attack space marines. They're the Emperor's sons. The Tin King smiled. Even though he didn't have a face, Og somehow knew that he smiled. He didn't like it. Hmm. Yes, I did do that, didn't I? I'll admit I considered waiting for the Navy to pass. But their presence provided me with an incredible opportunity. And I simply couldn't pass it up. What? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No giving away my plans to my enemy. Unless, of course, you decide that you're not my enemy. Never! You killed Pete! As I said, I am sorry that you lost your friend. But the blood of millions of people just like Pete are on the hands of the Lords of Polis. You're smarter than most, Ogren. So I'll leave you with this. Just think about my offer. What harm could it do? It's only a dream, after all. With that, the vision of the Tin King and the forge beneath the surface slowly faded to black, and Og's sleep became deep and dreamless. Og didn't understand a lot of what the bad man said. Bad men always tell bad lies. Og knew this. Always stay true to the Emperor. Always do as you're told. These truisms had served Og well in his time in the Astra Militarum, and he never doubted them. But there was a feeling worming its way inside of Og's mind that something was wrong. That something was wrong with Polis. Not just the Tin King. But how could that be true of the planet that Og believed loved the Emperor so much. Og put these thoughts aside for the moment. He was too tired to even think, as he sank deeper and deeper 
into a dreamless sleep. No man do they call me, my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Og the Ogren Returns. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that you too can be introduced to the concept of moral ambiguity by a faceless dream man. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about Ogrens being too pure for the grim darkness of the far future. If you'd like to support me, links to my PayPal, my Patreon, my merch store are down below. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Og Returns playlist and listen from the beginning, and that should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No man out.